Good morning, this is Miss Billerbeck, and we're going to talk about 4.3, Solving Systems of Equations by Elimination. So there are three ways to eliminate, by adding the equations together, by subtracting the equations from each other, or multiplying one or both of the equations, and then doing either method one or two. So let's take a, a look at what does it look like when we're adding equations together? And what strategies do we use? So when we look at an equation and we decide what is the easiest thing to do, we look at coefficients. So we see, oh, well, we have a 2 and a negative 1 here because we don't write the 1, but there's really a 1 right there. So we could write a little 1 right there. Okay, and we have negative 4 and 4. Hey, those are the same but opposite. So if I added these two equations together, what would happen is I'd have 2 minus 1 is just 1x negative 4y plus 4y is 0 equals 2 plus 3, which is 5. So I get x equals 5. Then I'm not done yet because I need to find out, well, what is y? So I would go and I put it in the easiest of the equations. Both equations will give me the same answer. So it doesn't matter. Don't stress about which equation. Just choose one. All right, so this one here is negative x. So I could put negative 5 in there because x is 5 plus 4y equals 3. Then add 5 to both sides. And I get 0 plus 4y equals 8. Well, now I want to use a multiplicative inverse and divide by 4, and I get y equals 2. So I get a final solution there of, I write x first and then y, so I get 5, 2, and that's our solution. So x is first and then y. So this would be an intersecting system. All right, so when we scan this one, we see, oh, I have 2x and negative 2x, so uh, those will eliminate because the coefficients are the same and opposite, so they're additive inverses. So um, that's what you're looking for. So 2x plus negative 2x is 0x, plus 3y plus 2y is 5y equals 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. So this is just 0, so we don't really need it. So bye-bye. And then we're going to divide this with a multiplicative inverse of 5. So we get y equals negative 1. All right, so we can plug this into either equation to find our answer. So we have for x, so we have 2x plus 3 times negative 1 equals 1. So 2x plus negative 3 equals 1. I'm going to use an additive inverse here. And I get 2x equals 4. Now I'm going to use a multiplicative inverse, divide by 2, and I get x equals 2. Okay, so then the point for this equation would then be 2, negative 1. And again, I have an intersecting system. Now the important thing to do is once you've got your answer to check, you just quickly plug it in. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. So that checks out. Now this one here, we use this equation down here to find it. So let's use this one up top. So 2 times 5 is 10 minus 4 times 2 is 8. So 10 minus 8 is 2. So that one checks as well. So on these, it's really easy to mess up and lose a negative sign. 
and that'll just really throw you off. So make sure that once you've got your coordinates to check them with the other equation that you didn't use to solve for it. Solve for the second variable. Okay, so now let's try the other technique of subtracting the equations. Now, for some reason, your book doesn't tackle this one, but it's a very common way to solve very simply. So you take this, and you see, oh, hey, these two have the exact same coefficient. They aren't additive inverses. They're the same. So we could just subtract everything on this line and get our answer. So 4x minus 3x is x. 2y minus y is 0. And 12 minus 8 is 4. So we have x equals 4. Wasn't that simple? Okay, so now you just plug the 4 into either equation. It doesn't matter. So you have 4 times 4 plus 2y equals 12. So that's 16 plus 2y equals 12. Then we subtract the 16 from both sides. And we get 2y equals negative 4. Divide by 2, and we get y equals negative 2. OK, so our solution then will be 4, negative 2. Now, to check that, I use this equation to find it. So let's put it in here. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So 12 plus negative 4 is 8. So that checks. So this is our solution. And since we have one solution, we have intersecting lines. So this one, we have the same situation. We have the same coefficients. So we're going to have to subtract. So 3x minus 3x is 0. 3y, this is a tough one. 3y minus a negative y. So we're going to talk about that. I do that in my head, but I want to write it out so that you guys, oops, that's actually a minus 3y minus make minus y. So negative y. Okay, did you catch all that? This is negative 3y minus negative y. That's a lot of negatives. Okay, that could confuse anyone. So then this is 36 minus 24, which is 12. So let's decipher what this is. So I have two negatives right next to each other. So that's negative 3y plus y, and that's really a 1y, equals 12. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2y equals 12. Then we're going to divide by negative 2, so we get rid of that negative, and we get y equals negative 6. So now we can plug it into either equation. Um, so if we had uh, 3x minus 3 times negative 6 equals 36, that's 18. So 3x, that's a positive 18 equals 36. So we're going to use an additive inverse. And we get 3x equals 18. We'll divide each side by 3, the multiplicative inverse, and we get x equals positive 6. So for this one, our solution ended up being positive 6 for the x and negative 6 for the y. So that could be really confusing if we drop the negative. So let's double check because subtraction can be a little more difficult than adding the equations. So 3 times 6 is 18 minus a negative 6. So that's plus 6. So 18 plus 6 is 24. So that checks. All right, let's look at the last technique 
of elimination. So this one, we're going to multiply one or both equations so that we do have the same coefficient. Now, I would suggest making it so you are not subtracting the equations, but adding them, because you can see how easy it is to, to um, mess up a negative when you're subtracting. So what I would do is I'd take this whole equation and multiply it by 2. So let's do that right here. So we, oh, let's multiply it by negative 2. So we have an additive inverse. So this becomes negative 6, or negative 2x. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative, I should not use an x there. Let's just go like that negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y and negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So now we add these together because we have additive inverses, a 2x and a negative 2x, which is 0, and negative 5 plus negative 4 is negative 9y, so same sign sum you add them and keep the sign. And then negative 1 plus negative 8 is negative 9. So now we're going to divide everything by negative 9. And we get y equals positive 1. Okay, so we're going to put that back into one of the equations. x plus 2 times 1 equals 4. So we get x equals plus 2 equals 4. Subtract the 2. And we get x equals 2. So our solution, even though we found x second, it is first in the coordinate. So our solution then for this is 2, 1. All right, so let's double check that in the next one. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5 times 1 is negative 5. So 4 minus negative 5 is negative 1. So that checks, okay? Checking is super easy. You use the other equation you didn't use the first time. So on this one, I don't have to make the x the same. I can make the y the same. So I can do the same thing here, but multiply by a positive 2. And then let's just make a dot here for multiplication so we don't confuse it with a variable. Okay, so under here, I'm going to have 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times y is 2y. And then 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to add these two equations together. So this is really a 1x plus 4x is 5x. Negative 2y plus 2y is 0. And negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So when I divide this using a multiplicative inverse of 5, I get x equals negative 1 fifth. That's not my favorite kind of number uh, for solving, but we can use that and plug it into one of these equations. So um, let's go ahead and plug it into this equation right here. So we have negative one fifth minus two y equals negative five. Okay, so with an equal sign, you can multiply everything by five to get rid of that fraction. That gives us negative 1 minus 10y equals negative 25. So now you have no fraction to deal with. So now we're going to add 1 to both sides. And we get negative 10y equals negative 24. Okay, we're going to divide by negative 10 on both sides. Sorry for the lack of room there, but um, that gives us a y equals, and then we need to reduce that. Let me make this a little 
smaller here, so negative 10. So we're going to need to reduce this. They're both reducible by um, 2. So we have, there's two negatives, which makes it positive. So we have um, 12 over 5. Okay, so we have 12 over 5 for our solution. So for this, this one, we would have the coordinate negative 1 fifth and 12 fifths. You probably should check it when you get a really nasty solution like that. So 2 times negative 1 fifth is negative 2 fifths. Negative 2 fifths plus 12 fifths is 10 fifths, which is 2. And that's what that is. So it checks. OK, whoops. There you go. So this is our solution. We plugged it in here. 2 times negative 1 fifth is negative 2 fifths plus 12 fifths goes in here. So negative 2 plus 12 is 10. So then we have 10 fifths, which um, reduces to 2. So again, that does check, even though it's not the nicest coordinate ever. All right, so let's do a real life example now. So we have a florist. And the florist was about to finish the bouquets in a large orders place. And after the order, there's only 800 roses and 163 tiger lilies remaining. That's remaining. Okay. All right. If a regular bouquet takes five roses and 11 lilies, and a mini bouquet takes three roses and five lilies, how many bouquets can be made? So let's make our roses. and L, a fancy L lilies. Okay, so we know that with the regular bouquet, we need five roses, and with the mini bouquet, we need three roses. And then that, how many roses? We have 85 roses in all that are left over. Okay. And then um, with the lilies, the regular bouquet, we use 11 lilies plus 5 lilies, and that's going to equal 163 lilies. Okay, so we can't just, you know, it can't be just anything. They have to be equal because we have to have equal amounts of bouquets. So we need to know how many roses we can use and how many lilies. So we need to know when this is going to um, be an equal amount. So I've got my lilies. I've got my roses. Um, but let's, instead of using these, let's use So we have roses, and let's change this variable. Is that still not going to work for me? Okay, so we're going to go for the regular bouquet will be R. And the mini bouquet is going to be um, M. Okay, so this is going to be our rose equation, and this is going to be our lily equation. Okay, that's how we're going to do it, because that way didn't work. So we have our regular. So let's double check. For the regular, we had five roses and eight lilies. So this is five roses per regular bouquet, 11 roses per um, 11 lilies for regular bouquet. So we're using regular for bouquet instead of roses. Now M is the mini. So three roses for the mini bouquet and five lilies for the mini bouquet. 
now when we have them the same, we're set. Okay, we'll have our answer. So sometimes we really have to think, how are we going to set this up where it makes some sense? All right, so nothing has the same coefficient. And nothing looks like it's easily going to have the same coefficient. So this is going to require multiplying both equations. So we're first going to um, think about what, well, let's multiply this one by 5 and get this coefficient to be 15, and this one by negative 3. So we have additive inverses. So 5 times 5 is 25R. 5 times 3 is 15M. And 5 times 85 is 425. Okay, then this one, negative 3 times 11 is negative 33R. And then negative 3 times 5 is negative 15M equals, and then we have negative 3 times this. So we have a negative number, 3 times 3 is 9, then 18, so we have negative 489. So it looks like we're going to be dealing with some negative numbers. So this is the same thing as 33 minus 25. So that gives us a negative 8R. Okay. And this one is the same thing as the negative version of 489 minus 425. So that gives us 4. 64. Oh, look how easy this is going to be. So now we divide by negative 8, and we get regular, which is r, is going to be 8. So now we can plug it into either one of these equations. So 5 times 8 plus 3m equals 85. So this is a 40. And we're going to subtract 40. And that's 3m equals, and then this becomes 45. Okay, so when we divide by 3m here, by 3, just 3, not m, so we get m equals 15. Okay, so that what that means, what is our answer? So our coordinate, well, it's kind of hard to talk about a coordinate with r and m. We're just trying to find out what they are. So this, what it means is we, let me clear up some space to write the answer. So what this means is we can make eight regular bouquets. And we can make 15 mini bouquets. OK, so that's what we're trying to find to run our business effectively so we don't have a wilted flower left over that we can't use. Because then we have to throw it out. And scrapping a, a beautiful flower is not only a tra travesty, it will make you lose money. All right, so now let's look at the final one. Okay, so this one, it says solve any which way. So we see, ooh, what we could do is either multiply by negative 2 and get that one similar, or we can multiply everything by 6, but then that number is going to get rather large. Or we could divide that one by 2. That might be nice. We Or divide it. Yeah, we could divide it by negative 2. Let's do that. Because I, we haven't even gone that direction. But if you divide this whole thing by negative 2. So 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3x. 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6y. 
negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. And now look, we can add them together. We have 0. This becomes negative 8y to negative 2y plus negative 8y is or negative 2y plus negative 6y is negative 8y equals, and then negative 27 plus 3 gives us negative 24. So then we use a multiplicative inverse, and we get y equals positive 3, because two negatives dividing give us a positive. We can plug this into either equation, original equation, not one you messed with like this. Okay, put it into the original. So we have 3x minus 2 times 3 equals negative 27. So 3x minus 6 equals negative 27. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. And that gives us 3x equals negative 21. When we subtract negative 27 plus 6 is negative 21. So now we're going to use a multiplicative inverse by, since 3 is multiplying x, we're going to divide it by x. And we get our 3 is multiplying x, we're going to divide it by 3, not x. And we get x equals negative 7. So our answer for this one is going to be negative 7 because we write the x first and then the y of 3. We can check it quickly in the next the equation we didn't use. 6 times negative 7 is negative 42 plus 12 times 3 is 36. So negative 42 plus 36 is negative 6. So it works. All right, so this particular one is not set up for elimination. So this one, we would have, we use elimination here. But this one's set up for substitution because we have a variable that's isolated. So when it's set up for substitution, unless the, the question says solve by elimination, Use substitution if a variable is isolated, because that's the easiest thing to do. So I have the x here. I have x equals 6, y, 6 minus y, so I could just write 3 times 6 minus y minus 2y equals 38. So I distribute. I get 18 minus 3y minus 2y, this 2y here equals 38. Now I'm going to use the additive inverse of this 18 here, negative 18 here, negative 18 here, and that's 0, negative 3y minus 2y is negative 5y equals, and 38 minus 18 is 20. So we divide by negative 5, and I get y equals negative 4. Okay, so now I can plug that back in here. I have x minus 6 equals, sorry, x equals 6 minus a negative 4, which is 6 plus 4. So x equals 10. So my solution for this one then is 10 negative 4. Okay. And then I check it in the other equation. 3 times 10 is 30, minus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So minus negative 8 is plus 8. So 30 plus 8 is 38. So it checks out. So with these, it's super easy to check your work. You just plug it into the other equation. All right, that is it for this lesson of 4.3. I hope you learned a ton and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.